Okay, my name is Henry Smo. You are listening to the Realize Hour. It's a one hour presentation about the Realize Project. The Realize Project is a recovery of economic activities for Liberian informal sector employment. The Realize Project is uh, managed by the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, and the Liberia Agency for Community Empowerment. It's financed by the World Bank, the Swedish International Development Corporation Agency, and the French Development Agency. My name is Henry Smo, and my colleague Jutomo Stanford Flomo is here with me in studio today to kickstart this uh, program. We hope to uh, take some calls. Um, they are not, the numbers will come later. So that if you're listening to us, if you have questions, we know our beneficiaries are all in Montserrat County, Mark, if you, other counties uh, where Spoon FM can reach. And if you have questions, you need some clarity on some of the issues we're saying here, you will call that number that will be announced to you and ask the question you want to ask about other things because we will not be able to see everything here today. Uh, the next time we come, we'll be dealing with some um, specific components. We'll not be going um, on all the companies. So today we are dedicating this meeting edition of the program to an overview of the project. We want you to call in the next um, uh, five minutes. So we'll be announcing the number to you. But um, due to you talk about two other companies, you talk about the first and second components. Um, we know component three and four are are uh, not um, operational so we want to talk about company five uh, i know you you serve as acting coordinator for some time before um, the project will hire an, an agriculture officer so you walk you are a walking encyclopedia of company five of the project would you like to talk something about company five yes yeah, sure Henry. okay it's, it's, it's good to see your support too uh, on that company it was very very massive Okay, so component five is the community livelihood and agriculture support. That component is specifically targeting rural counties, mm -hmm. especially counties with history of agricultural activities and doing very well. Mm -hmm. Because, um, in fact, there is a history that preceded this component and going to those particular counties because okay. there used to be a project that was implemented before, the Youth Opportunity Project. It was into agriculture too, and most of those counties performed very well under the past project. So the community livelihood and agriculture support component is a component that has two separate activities. Mm -hmm. One is the livelihood component or the livelihood side of it, mm -hmm. where it will support local farmers. Okay. And then the other one is the community development support side of it, where in we support communities. Mm -hmm. The livelihood and agriculture support. Mm -hmm. We go into the county, right? So from the beginning, we have identified all of the counties that will benefit. And under this component, there are eight counties that will benefit, right? And the eight counties to benefit are Bum, Bumming, then Cape Mount, Bapulu, Lofa, Nima, Jengide, and Silo. So these are the eight counties that will benefit under the community livelihood and agriculture support, right? Now, we go to the community, to the county, mm -hmm. sorry, and then we have consultation with the local government there, mm -hmm. the superintendent and all of the leadership structure. We present to them all of the activities and the benefit that will come to the county, okay. right? But we have data that we are working with, and our partner, the World Bank, has done a very good job. We know all of the districts and all of the counties that mm -hmm. are poor and vulnerable. We have that data. We take it with us to the county consultation and we present it to the leadership structure. And we tell them that this budget is coming, is going to benefit your county. But we are targeting poor and vulnerable districts, poor and vulnerable communities. So we work along with them, we give them the criteria. This, these are the criteria that we need to go to a particular district or to go to a particular community. And we work along with them to identify the districts that we are going to and the communities that we are going to. Okay. But once we identify the districts, we go to the districts now and have consultation and then we identify the communities. At the community level, mm -hmm. when we get to the community, the same recruitment process is it, the same, right? For all of the components. Mm -hmm. We do the same old thing, 18 years and above and so on and so forth. Now, when we get to the community, 28 persons mm -hmm. will benefit per community. 
28 persons. Mm -hmm. So we got the 28 persons through the process that we talked about earlier on, put them into a group, and then we work along with them to identify a sub-project. For the agriculture component, the sub-project will be what kind of crop you want to grow. Okay. So we work along with them, identify the crops they want to grow. And then as a group, we give them 1,680 US dollars to procure farming input. Farming input would mean the tool, the seed, whatever they need to make that farm, right? Mm -hmm. And then for each member of the group, while making the farm, we give them 350 US dollars okay. as labor subsidy. That one is just like be eating this one in the meantime while you wait for your, your harvest, your farm to get ready. And the good thing is, whatsoever investment we are making in there, mm -hmm. in those communities, is for the beneficiaries. They make their farm, at the end of the day, they harvest, they sell their produce. Whatsoever income they generate is for the group. Mm -hmm. And then we also teach them. We don't just leave them. We teach them new technologies and, you know, climate smart agriculture. We also give them financial literacy training. We work along with them to open maybe village saving loans and all of that so that they are empowered at the end of our intervention and they, can, they are able to continue whatsoever we are doing with them. That's one side of it. The second side is the community development support. So in each community that we are targeting, while we are working along with 28 farmers, mm -hmm. we also work along with the community. So we identify a structure which we call the Community Oversight Committee, mm -hmm. COC. Normally the structure is comprised of the community leaders, the town chief, the women leader, you know, youth leader, so on and so forth. But it's a five member committee. And that committee will work with the rest of the community members to identify a project okay. that will support the beneficiary farming group, okay. right? So I'll give you an example. Perhaps this community, yes, they got the farmers there, but the road is challenging. Maybe there's a little log bridge that has issues. Okay. So the community come together. We have our farmers here, they're making farms. Let's see if we can work on this bridge. So that at the end of the day, they are able to take... So are you saying the project must be aligned with the beneficiary's interests? Sure. So sure. what if the, the, the... Because the money is intended for community development. Yes. So what if we want to develop a hemp pump, want to build a hemp pump, or there is a school that has, that has been impacted by, by a storm, probably we want to change the zinc, or add an annex to a public school that is now a village. Yeah. Uh, so how does that align with the benefit of all the interests of the beneficiary farmers? So it's, it's, it's very key. For example, let's talk about the hand pump. Mm -hmm. We have our beneficiaries working, right? And maybe they're drinking from one polluted water. And their stomach running, they're having cholera. They can't continue the farm. So if they are able to handle the pump issue where mm -hmm. our beneficiaries can drink safe water, they will have energy to work and they will be productive. Okay. So you see the connection, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just an example. And, you know, we have different other community projects that we are working on. Okay. So the community meet, the COC coordinate the meeting, and then they make decision on okay. what kind of project they want to undertake. And so based on the project they want to undertake, we give them 1,800 US dollars okay. to be able to underwrite that project for okay. the community benefit. Yes, that's how it is for the class component. So um, when you go into the counties, you meet politicians that, that have to authorize you to move on. Do you pay them? No, we do not pay politicians because they are already working in the interest, we assume, okay. of their community or their county or district. So we just work along with them. We tell them the benefit is going to their people. Mm -hmm. And you know, but we do not have any extra benefit for the community leaders because most of them are already on government payroll. So we're targeting those poor and vulnerable people who don't have any source of income. And you know, but so far, the, the community, I mean, the county structure, they have been very supportive. Uh, you're giving cash to people. Um, how do you have an understanding that this money has been used for the internal purpose? Very good. So if you agree on your sub-project for your communities, mm -hmm. and then the money is transferred to one member of the COC, mm -hmm. and they are all colleagues, yeah. how do we... Um, know that this money has been spent transparently in the interest of the community. Very good. So we have put in a feedback mechanism mm -hmm. wherein we are able to communicate to our beneficiaries and our beneficiaries are able to communicate back to us. Okay. So we have a grievance redress mechanism in place and we have a toll-free number 
where anybody can call free of charge. We pay for it. Okay. We pay for it. And the number is 3344. So when we get into the community, doing our engagement meeting with the community leadership and the rest of the community members, we are very key in our discussion. We make them to understand that, hey, you have this opportunity that in case you see anything going wrong, you can report whosoever by calling 3344. We do not even stop there. We have pictorials, we have posters that we put all in the community. We sensitize the citizens, we tell them, in case you have a problem, call 3344, report it. Nobody is going to hold you accountable and they, they actually feed back to us. So but the thing is, the five member committee, mm -hmm. right? They receive the one thousand eight hundred dollars. Yes. They decide to spend one thousand two and about the six hundred they divide it and bring receipts like appear general. How do you know how do you feel that the community has been cheated? How do you know that this community has been cheated? That's what I'm talking about. Except somebody brings a complaint, you will not know. So you do you don't have a mechanism to determine that this money was actually not spent for this item, do you? We do. Okay. So in the first place you do a proposal, okay. right? In your proposal, you tell us all of what you need, and then the cost is there, right? Then we give you the money. You go to the store, you buy all of what you say you wanted to buy at the prices that you gave us, and then you submit the receipt from that store to, to us. That yes, I said I was going to buy a shovel, $10, this is it, I wanted to buy 10 shovels, here is it, I wanted to buy 15, this, here is it, and then we validate to make sure that what you say in your proposal is actually what you got. Okay. Thank you. So we're about to announce the number, but let me say that component two of the project has been implemented currently. Is um, The recruitment activity is already going. We're going to be hiring 50,000 residents of Mozzarella County uh, on a temporary basis, and you are entitled to $240 for the six-month period that you're going to serve the project. Um, in 40 communities, uh, in 40 communities in Mozzarella and 10 communities in Maggie County. So that's 50,000 uh, temporary jobs that the Realized Project going to be offering uh, in the next few months to residents of Mozzarella and Maggie County. So the numbers to call and ask any question you want to ask us is uh, 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 are the two numbers to call and participate on the show. Somebody's on the line already. Hello? You're asking how do you do the application? Okay, we explained some already, so we'll talk about that later. We're taking the questions down. Um, let's take another call. 0 777 Hello? Okay. Go ahead, love to. What happened? You worked with the project before. What happened? Okay, but the benefit that you went, which of the company you benefited from? You participated on? Why you did? Which component? There was a business or the community work uh, component? But you went for training, right? You went for training. Besides the work you are doing, you went for training, right? Yeah, I went for the training. We were successful in the training. I worked for two months. They all have the two months to pay off. Okay. So you receive all your money? Somebody's trying to smoke in from there? <laughs> no, be, 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 tell us. Okay. Okay, so that's the benefit we're talking about. Yeah, thank you. Hello? Hello? Okay. Thank you for the show. Thank you for the program. But I just 
Okay, all right, uh, keep listening. We'll tell you who's how someone is qualified, right? We already said some, but we'll tell you how one is qualified. Uh, I'm not sure uh, groups are qualified. Hello, are you live? Yeah, we got the local phone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all you want to say? You want to say something different? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, stand for you. You 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 jotted some of the questions down, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, let me start to address the first question. Somebody asked how can they get on the program. I explained that, but I will go over it briefly. So uh, first thing first, you have to be residing in one of our project communities. So the first thing before you be a beneficiary of the real last project, you must be residing in one of the communities that we are targeting for benefit. <laughs> For example, we have a whole list of communities that we are working with and we are working through different rounds. So for round one, we work with different set of communities. Somebody called from Oro, yes, we're in Oro, we're in Chukbo, we're in Gate Town, Smart Row, Keyhole, Depo, all of those places were there. So you must be residing in the community we are working in. That's the first thing. The second one is you must be 18 years old and above. <laughs> The third one, you should, you should express interest. That is, you want to participate. That's all you need. We will come in the community to you. We will make announcement of where the recruitment will be taking place. We will go all in the community. Mostly, we identify a center, right? It could be a church. So, for example, we'll tell you, like, in, in the old road community, um, Gay Town, <laughs> we were at the Catholic Church. Well, we were at church. The Christ the King. Christ Very the good. Church. Christ the King Church. So in the Oro Gate Town era, we we're at Christ the King Church, and we made the announcement all in the community come to Christ the King. And Christ the King is a very popular church in the Gate Town community. So we stay at Christ the King for three days, and people came, people who had interest, they went through the enumeration process, and those that were eligible, their name came up. So that's all. You must be in the community that we are targeting. You must be 18 years old and above, and you should express interest by coming on the day of recruitment to the recruitment center and go through the process, that's all. Then somebody talk about cooperative in my GB. How can they be part of the project because we talk about uh, agriculture. So yes, we are targeting cooperatives, but you have to be in the county that we are working in. Unfortunately, my GB is my not GB. a part of the agriculture yeah, exactly. uh, counties. Sure. So Magibi is not on our list to benefit from the agriculture component. Instead, we have the small business support in Magibi. So I'm sorry that, yes, you are a cooperative. We are supporting cooperatives as well. But we cannot support you because you are not operating in our county that we are targeting. I think that was the, those were the two questions so far yes. that came in. Okay, so we, um, we go into a closure point. We have a few more minutes to go. Um, we didn't talk about the cash transfer, the social cash transfer program, which is company six of the project, um, managed by the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection. The company six also has a B that has to do with system building. So we want to talk briefly about the cash transfer. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Sumo, like we said, doing the recruitment, the recruitment is the same for all of the components except mm -hmm. component six. Okay. So for component six, we are targeting poor and vulnerable communities. But this time around, you don't have to have interest or so be 18 years and above, like we said, on the other components. So for this one, we have counties we are targeting, right? We have the data that we are working with. We go to the community, the county leadership, we present to them poor and vulnerable districts within the county that we rent based on the poverty school or the poverty level in that county. So at that consultation, we agree based on the data we are working with that yes, in this county, this district is the poorest, this is the second poorest district, this is the third. So based on the districts that we agree on, 
with the county leadership for component six, yeah. we move to those districts and then we identify the communities, right? So once we identify the community, it's a universal approach. Mm -hmm. Everybody living within that community that has been identified to be a whole community will automatically benefit from the cash transfer. That's the difference between component six and the rest of the other components. So we go to the community, we identify all of the households living within that community, mm -hmm. and we have a unique definition of our household, right, under the Real Life Project. All of the members of the family that eat from the same pot are considered to be from one household. Yeah. So we could have a structure that is the house, and within that structure, there could be one household or two households or three, depending on how they eat their food together. So maybe we have a house, the man and his wife and children, they in one room, mm -hmm. they cook their own food. Another man, his children, they in another room, they cook their own food. We consider them as separate households. Okay. So we get into the community, we map all of the structures, we enumerate all of the households, and all of the households within those communities are eligible. Okay. Now, once we consider you to be eligible, we work along with the, the female that is most responsible for that household. But the only difference is the female should be greater than 18 years. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we ask this household, Mr. Henry Small and his wife, who is the one most responsible? Henry Small wife. She's the one who is, who is responsible to buy the food, to cook the food, pay the children's school fee, this and that. Then we consider Mrs. Small as the cash recipient. So if we want to choose our daughter, who is also uh, 18 years or above, without the mother being a cash recipient. So it's possible, but we must first, first establish that the daughter is the one that is most responsible for the activity. And what is the definition for being most responsible? Very briefly, because we are almost uh, at the end point. So the person that is responsible to cook, the person that is responsible to go in the market, the person who buys provision for the house. You might not be the one providing the cash, right? I could be providing the cash, but you are the one doing all the run around and making sure everything is intact. Mm -hmm. It means you are the one that is most, the female that is most responsible for the home. But you're taking instructions, so it doesn't mean you understand what you want other I, than the person who gave you the instruction. I agree, but the person who is there doing the work has the best understanding okay. of management. Okay, so we got uh, six more meetings to go that we'd like to cut off between here and then end the show today. So you've been listening to the Realize Hour on Spoon FM. Um, this uh, program is going to continue in subsequent time. My name is Henry Smo. My colleague Jutomo Stanford Flomo has been here to assist in this meeting edition of the program. Again, we'll be here next time. Thank you very much for being a part of this show today. Goodbye. <laughs>